Hey guys, got a new graph installed on the kayak. I wanna show you uh, how to dial it in, basically. So we already got this thing installed, and this is the first time we're taking it out on the water. So I'm gonna show you how I like to dial in the graph and a little bit uh, getting started. So let's get out on the water and see what it looks like. Get our pedals going here, our Hobie. Kind of show you a little bit about how I got this rigged here. Battery is below here. It's down there. It's rigged below these tackle boxes. It's out of the way. And I've run it through the entire kayak, zip tied it up and everything. Got the transducer mounted. Uh, the Hobie comes with a nice uh, Lowrance compatible uh, transducer uh, plate, skid plate, so it's completely flush underneath the kayak so if you're running up shallow water or something like that uh, you're not going to damage it and we'll turn it on for the the first time actually second time i got it just out of demo mode but there it goes there we go position acquired so it'll automatically get the the time and day go ahead and press save on that okay enter We've got too much surface clutter here though, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in here to our menu. Sensitivity, auto sensitivity, we will uh, change that. Change that auto sensitivity. Range, you always want that on auto, or at least I like to leave it on auto. If you're fishing shallower water it gives you a nice clearer picture and it'll change if you go out in deep water frequency 200 hertz you could put it on 83 you can actually hear the big difference there <laughs> you can hear it clicking the transducer clicking change the frequencies um you know the 83 hertz it's a little bit uh it's a little bit more powerful uh, uh sonar Put it back on the 200 here. Ping speed, we'll leave that on fastest. Uh, sonar options, let's see what we have here. Noise rejection, low. We'll put that on medium. Fish ID, we don't want to turn that fish ID on. When you do that, you get this whole thing. You got a blank screen and then when the sonar thinks you're coming across a fish, it'll It'll, you know, put a little fish mark on the screen. But it's it's really uh, not not using its capabilities. If you're fishing clear water, you probably want to turn that sensitivity up. But this this is giving me a more clearer picture of what's going on here, uh, more absolute image. You know, I've got a fish coming up here on the screen, and I know that for sure is going to be a fish. When I get the sensitivity. You know, back to auto here, you know, I've got, it looks like there's fish all over the middle of the screen. Yes, I, I see that it looks like a fish right here, but it just, it's way too noisy. So I always like to reduce that a little bit. And so negative four, here's a nice, nice clear picture. So with your sensitivity somewhere in the middle, you know, you're not seeing just a few fish there and thinking you found the mother load. The screen's filled with, with all this activity so if you have the sensitivity down and you're marking a couple fish, there may even be more there, but you're not tricking yourself into fishing every spot every 20, 30 yards down the bank. Now something else I like to do when I get a new graph is make an adjustment to the uh, amplitude scope or the um, real-time sonar. Uh, basically this allows you to see what's going on under the boat in real time. Go to your sonar options. It'll be a little bit different depending on your graph. Uh, here's the amplitude scope here. I can turn that on. And then this basically gives me a real time uh, window into what is going on below me. So if there's not any activity uh, below me, I'm not gonna see anything going on over here on the real time sonars because there's a little bit of a lag that happens um, on that screen. So. 
If you're vertically fishing, especially, that's really going to help you to know what's going on directly under your boat um, at that exact moment. Now, one of the other nice features about this is we have the ability to go with the down sonar. We'd actually see some of the, the bass and the, uh, the white bass underneath these balls of bait here. Honestly, I like the sapia. I think that's the best. That's the best looking one, I think. So here's a view that I really use a lot. And we've got a, a dual a dual imaging here of the regular sonar and we've got the down imaging technology. That's really nice because you're able to kind of see what it actually is. Um, it just helps you really learn what's how to use the traditional sonar versus the the, the new down scanning technology. Here's an example of that nice view, that down imaging. I can actually see my my jig going up and down right there. See the sensitivity in that thing. There's actually a fish, fish close to it. It's not eating it. But you can see the activity of my jig right there where you can barely see it right there. That's really cool. All right, guys, I'm done setting up this graph. You know, I'm probably not even gonna mess with it the rest of the year. Just make teeny tiny adjustments here and there. It is good to go. So I hope this helps you set, set up your graph a little bit. You know, these are my personal preferences. Not everybody has the same eyes or likes to see it the same way I do, but this is how I like to identify fish and mark fish and I, I like this unit it's pretty cool so this kayak is decked out ready for offshore fishing and i can't wait to do some more of it so hope this tip helped you and i'll catch y'all later smallmouth are notorious for for loving tubes but largemouth also like them too and they're great to crawl around the bottom you can pitch with them uh, yes they can be an erratic bait uh, but when fish slow, just crawling around, they're a good cold water bait. But I mean, as soon as I got into the grass, that was the key. There's hardly any around here. I spotted about three or four coots together in this one spot. And literally my, my first cast, I found the grass and then second, caught the fish. So always 